We are on page 41 of your budget. The budget for the PD is bottom line $1,943,103 is a 10% increase of $178,956. Um, the large portion of that is a $44,000 increase in part-time salaries. That is due to the addition of a parking enforcement, part-time parking enforcement officer in the next year. And do you want to go over any of, any other highlights, Chief? Uh, also in that, uh, we are trying to add a part-time dispatcher. It's not add a position, but fill it on a more regular basis um, to help give us coverage. Right now, we have an employee that's out on medical. <laughs> Some of the other spots where we went up, uh, we went up in some of the leasing. Um, that's due to our anticipated body camera uh, program that we're on the verge of getting going. Uh, we think it's going to be next month. Uh, we're having some issues with the computer program, uh, whether or not we're going to store the stuff at our place or it's going to be at the, the people who own the body cameras. Um, We've also added some software that just uh, helps us track the officers and things that are going on at the station as far as their training and items of that nature. We are also increasing both the overtime budget a little bit and the training budget due to the fact that uh, we are required to do more training uh, as of this year. In the past, it has been eight hours mandated per officer and now it is mandated to be at least 24 hours. So not only do we have to send officers to training, but we also have to cover their shifts when they're away for that training. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to uh, answer them. Um, John. How many officers do you have now that would uh, need to be So. All of the officers are going to. I, I technically have 15 full-time positions, though not all of those are full. And I have some part-time officers that are going to need to do the training as well. Um, two of those officers I'll be responsible for. Chief Sear, who used to be the chief here, works at the University of New Hampshire Police Department, and he has been doing training through them. But I'm also going to be required to do the part-time officers as well. So it could be as many as 17 officers. Just, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm going to forward this week all of the draft jobs. I know we have three new positions in the budget, um, the parking enforcement engineer and the position at the rec department. So we'll give you a draft of what the job description is so you can get an idea why, you know, I mean, parking enforcement, I think it's pretty clear what they do, but just to show what they do. Is, it, is the parking enforcement officer related to the project that John is doing on, on looking at parking? Is that a related thing? It is. It's this is so. First step is we need to enforce parking more. The next step would be do we look at meters to help turn over some of that parking and find other parking locations right. in the downtown? So I was did that committee then recommend? They they did yeah. at one point. I mean, I we, it seems like we're focusing more on meters, but we did say parking enforcement, we need to get that ASAP. I don't think as a council we ever got that info. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a related question. Yeah. I'm just curious, what is the current process for parking enforcement? So currently, uh, we have officers do parking enforcement when they're available. And uh, there's many times where they can be available, but there's also many times when they can't be. For example, right now, we have one police officer. So uh, often it's hard for him to go down. In the process right now we have is the officer will go down and mark the tires so he can figure out who's been 
officers are working, but there's a, an event down at the rec center uh, that will take an officer away. Um, and I can't imagine that there'll be much uh, parking enforcement done today just because of the, the lack of coverage. So uh, having a person that can uh, be kind of dedicated to that and not get pulled away from a call or some other um, item is, is going to be crucial to keeping that parking enforcement consistent. Any other questions? Um, I t you answered most of my questions. Um, the only other item that I was curious about was the dues and membership. Do you want to know that? Was, it's, it's a big jump, and I'm just curious why. I'm assuming there must be a reason why that one's. In 2022, we appropriated 4,900. 21 year to date was about 5,000, but it's proposed for 7,200. And I'm just curious if that's. Uh, I I just think that there's been an increase uh, in virtually all of the um, the dues that we have there, um, the CERT membership. Uh, we've added a third person to the IACP, which is the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and that's so the lieutenants can be uh, engaged in the information that goes along with that membership. Uh, we've also had several officers uh, get their JP, so they're able to you know, sign certain paperwork or acknowledge certain paperwork. Um, and there's some SRO memberships uh, that we've had to, we've had some new people come on that them into the SRO program, which is also mandated now as well. Thank you. So are there any proposed changes? Okay. Seeing none, then we are all set. I You're all set? Yep. Thank you. First budget, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and so we can expect to see the cruisers in the in the budget. From now on, yeah, right? that was a dis how, there yeah. was a discussion for a while that it's not a capital item because it's a we replace them every year. Right. Capital items are more, more than a it's like a one time project. Yep. Um, so yeah. Okay. Just I'm curious on this. So he has not got. The, we ordered the cruiser and apparently it takes like a year to deliver it. Right? I, I will tell you this: we have had <laughs> tremendous problems with all the car companies as far as getting things. Uh, I was just wondering when do we expect. When does that go into the budget? When we get it, or, or when no? We, we have to we budget before we order it. Okay. We've, yeah. we've purchased a vehicle that we're still waiting on. Right oh, now. It, we've already given her the money. Yeah. yeah for oh. for the one that we were supposed to get in July. The hybrid they, one. They've yeah. told me that it's coming in January. Uh, we got one of the vehicles that we purchased, but we had a vehicle that went down, and they told us that it was going to be at least three weeks before they could look at it. Hmm. They're having trouble getting parts, and, and all the car companies. Mm -hmm. We looked at a different. Um, we looked at Chevrolet, and Chevrolet said we're not even selling police cars right now. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's kind of tough in the car market right now. So. We're going to get little scooters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's coming. <laughs> Segways. Thank you. Next, we have recreation. Um, the recreation general fund starts on page fifty-six. And we are looking at a 6% increase in a total budget of $243,528, an increase of $14,584, which is mainly in full-time salaries. And after this, we'll get to the rec revolving fund. Right. I mean, did you want to, um, in case anybody doesn't know, this is Amy Gigande, our recreation director. Um, did you want to say anything about this part of the budget? Or um, It's pretty much this, the same. Again, most of what our changes are in the general fund are usually just payroll or salary. Um, and just kind of nitpicking some of the line items. I know that we went down in phones because there's no phone service. Um, I try not to do too much to the other line items each year. The 
because most of that is maybe uh, the uh, most of the expenses are, that Steve just mentioned are under the revolving account. So generally, the general fund is mostly just salary and those things that really just kind of keep the community center, you know, representing the town, not necessarily representing the rec department. Great. Any questions? Councillor Kuiper. Um, there was uh, some discussion recently about a sign uh, for the rec department. Is that something that would be in this budget, or would that be a DPW budget item? Or would Usually it's DPW. Okay. For the, the replacement of wayfinding signs, not. I have looked into one um, with Timberland that I kind of have designed and got permission from the previous chief to go on the other side of the road and also with the housing authority, something similar to what the library has. And that would come out of rec revolving mm -hmm. if we went to that extent. Yeah, they, they're just looking for the wayfinding to yeah. find how to get to the parks. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Sanders. I just have a question on the salaries line. Um, and you were asking for 270 town managers gathered at 229. Mm -hmm. What's that difference going to mean to you as far as employees go? That per that particular. Um, position was putting in a site supervisor for the, the morning and after school program, but after discussing with um, the town manager, we're going to put that under the revolving account. Okay. So you'll see that over there. All right. Yeah, it, since it's a new program, I want to make sure that we, the position is funded through the revenues. Okay. To, All right, if, so it's not like we're deleting a position. No. We're just, we're just we moved it. We're just sticking it someplace yep. else. Okay. And then I have a question. Yep. So, I happen to know that um, you, you and one of your people went, to, went on a trip uh, recently, and I see your, your travel expenses here are $500, and I was wondering how, how the heck you go to Kentucky or the hell it was on $500. Where, I'm sorry, I don't see $500. I see an expenditure of... I see recreation travel expense, $500. Oh, it went under tra training and staff development. Oh, okay. So travel expense is something like if I'm having to drive to Concord or to go pick up a vehicle or something. Right. No, Mileage, so, yeah. Mileage, yeah. And then there's one other thing that Councillor Sanders and I want to know where the beer budget is for the volunteer health day. <laughs> <laughs> we can look into that. Some, some town funds. I, I think we're paid in M&Ms. Yes. Yes. There you go. That's where I get my volunteer help from, yeah. Steve. I didn't know that. You, yeah. I'm not sure you, we were no, I did not. <laughs> one of our predecessors got in trouble for that. <laughs> And the next is a rec revolving fund, which is on page 58. It's an increase of $109,743. So it's a $478,556 uh, budget. This is all funded through revenues, oh, through programming, program. what we charge. So there's no impact on the tax rate for this. Uh, the main, as we just discussed, the main increase is due to um, the position of the site person which will get a job description to you this week. Okay. So you can see what it is. Right now we're working with part-time. That just doesn't apply to the management standpoint. Stand right. It's changed to turnover. Mm. So it's been a hard position to fill. Um, I'm not seeing anybody. I, I know that I was looking at some of the CIP projects and so I was curious you know some of those are obviously kind of um, in the future mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious what projects you expect to be working on this year like, uh, we well, as always um, I try to structure. The problem with the existing park right now, it was built 
in 2000 and by a company that's no longer in business. And so the, the, the park, no, no other skate park will go and fix that. So it's not just an easy fix. Um, so if we remove it, we cause other problems. Um, and we can't just remove it and put other new pieces on because the concrete below has the pave, um, it's sunk, the, the existing pieces sunk into the, the pavement. So when you remove those pieces, it's all, um, it'll be a mess. So you can't just go, oh, let's take this off and put something new on. The whole thing has to be redone. Um, I've talked to several um, skateboard companies. There's a lot of um, disagreement by the teens on what they want and versus what we put out there. Um, I am trying to do something that has a little bit more adult features to it because my hope is that the adults will be the peers out there, be role modeling in the teens who tend to be sometimes if, a little. If for those who don't know, skate parks are no longer teen parks. They are, those teens that started 20 years ago are now in their mid thirties who are still skating. Yeah. Um, so. It's, you're seeing that progression of it being older. Yeah, I've talked to a couple adult uh, skaters, and they and I asked him, "What what can I do?" And he says, "Well, anybody over 16 is driving elsewhere." So the majority of my age group is for is the middle school, um, and you know they're still learning. Mm. <laughs> so I would like to get some adult features out there and work with concrete, and rather invest in a nicer skateboard park, which is going to take a little bit longer to raise the funds, um, but I think in the long run, it'll be better for the town and overall. We just repaved the, um, we just resurfaced the basketball court. My goal is to just continue to make that back area, the rec department, look just as nice as the front area. I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other project that I'm, I'm working on is the Beach Street Center, mm -hmm. um, upgrading that. Um, I've talked to a couple of flooring companies. I am talk to the new facilities director about that. We're going to do a tour together um, in my attempt to turn that facility into a wellness center. Um, I know I've mentioned it in the monthly report a few times. It's just put on the back burner after the splash pad. I had to get that, had to get that out of the way. Um, and, and then my plan is to contract um, wellness instructors, mind, body, and they make it an affordable um, place where people can go to get those types of services, which is really usually expensive if you go to any of these places where it's you know, anything, uh, meditation, all those places are usually relatively expensive. I want something affordable that's drawing revenue for the town and it's helping the community, especially after the last few years we've had. Um, it's definitely trending, um, at, at going to nationals, it's trending in the whole United States is to offer more wellness and healthy mind and body, not just yoga. So that, that's nice. the plan. Yeah, just, uh, you know, people tend to think of recre recreation as two areas, youth and seniors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the middle part, you got to focus on, and I think Amy's doing a great job doing that. And the other problem is people don't want to join the seniors when they're actually technically seniors. <laughs> they, don't, they don't feel like they should be there. So... <laughs> <laughs> so that's the other thing that you know they're working on to try to explain that look it's not all it's another location for yeah. people to go to get that type of service I mean the Sunrise Center is called the activity center for 55 plus but it still has that feel so this is an adult programming type and my plan is to even create a, a, a back deck on the out behind it which overlooks the railroad tracks I know but it's very serene if you've ever been there mm -hmm. and doing some outdoor yoga and those type tai chi and things like no, that. Oh, it overlooks the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way. <laughs> we just got to time the classes so the uh, meditations aren't interrupted by the train. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a huge change for the facility. It's it's cosmetic. I know the the HVAC system has to be done, but the bathrooms look great and a new flooring and some paint and keeping the room open mm -hmm. and multi-use is still yeah. the plan. Well, I think from a revenue point of view that the middle people that you're discussing, that's where all the money is, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We definitely do well with the youth and the, the 55 plus, but we're 
still working on that adult um, population. Um, going to try to do some more intramural sports, just trying to find the right person to, in my employment, to help that go along. We are in, in the process of interviewing a new person right now. Great. It would be nice having something like that in town, because I know, personally, you drive to Rochester, you drive to Exeter, you try to find the YMCAs that offer those classes at a, a more reasonable rate than some of the spas. But it's 25 minutes to a half an hour to get mm -hmm. there. So something in town would be fabulous. One thing we just did um, on the resurface of the basketball court is we added uh, pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. I just said that out loud. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I just got all the netting, I got all the everything. Probably won't be able to open that up until the spring just because the weather is already mm -hmm. getting cold. But um, we have a plan to have that morning act time and in the afternoon it's basketball. Great. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, since you're here, um, that it's been kind of nice over the last couple of years as I've been bringing my son to the um, rec programs or the club bands, particularly that there's a lot of parents that were from not from Newmarket, and they had come and they said specifically that our town offered a lot more programs. And this was like Portsmouth, East Kingston, like, yeah. you know, they were driving pretty far. And then uh, the splash pad as well. <laughs> a lot of kids that aren't from Newmarket. I think it's kind of nice having that be a, um, you know, a draw. Yeah, it definitely brings the um, people out of town, and my hope is that they then spend time and they go to lunch. I can't tell you how many pizza boxes from Panzanella's we find in the um, in the garbage cans that don't fit in the circle. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of a square garbage can uh, because they are. They're ordering out, they're coming, and they're buying lunch downtown, and then they're coming to the park, which is... To, which is really a beautiful play date location because it has the, the playground and the splash pad and it's fenced in in the restrooms and that's all they want. Um, Saturday is crazy in the summer. It's like play date central with strollers everywhere. So That's awesome. Just a quick question. Have we thought about the next step for the splash pad? I mean, any expansion? I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just amazed at how packed it is. Um, there, the thought is there. Okay. Um, it would just be replacing, um, you know, maybe redoing where the uh, the small playground is, mm -hmm. because that would be the natural next location because the the, the filtration system is right there. Yeah. And the gazebo rentals really boomed after we opened the splash pad. Um, we made this private entrance. You know, that's like their their own personal gate into the splash pad, and we were we raised the rate of the gazebo rental from twenty five to one hundred dollars. Then we booked birthday parties in our concession stand. We had party packages, and we invented the um, yes, the brain freeze beach bucket snow cone. <laughs> Very popular item for a birthday party. <laughs> Staffing is my biggest problem. Yeah. yeah. Just, just a quick question on the on the gazebo rental. That doesn't entitle them to have the splash pad to themselves. Okay. Because no. there have been a couple of little ones running around going, we're just letting you in, but it's my splash pad. <laughs> 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 I was like, yeah, no, that's not really how it works. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have, if, if for the right amount of money, I will close the, the splash pad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, do you want to pay, you know, the money for a corporate party? I'd consider that because yeah. that will pay for a lot of things that mm -hmm. we need. So I just need to come up with that private amount number. Okay. <laughs> I have one okay. last question, and sure. that was, um, do you have any plans for more bench seating around the splash pad? Um, well, we added two benches at the end. They, okay. they were ordered, but all equipment is on back order. So two picnic tables arrived the day after the splash pad closed. Um, with umbrellas and two other benches arrived probably sometime in the, the later end of August. So, yes, there was supposed to be two picnic tables and two benches. And the grass is, we reseeded it and it looks, it's going to look so much better so people can, you know, a lot of people couldn't sit on the grass this year. Yeah, right. Thank you. Councilor Graybeck. Um, you mentioned a couple times that staffing has been a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, which I know is not unique. I know summer camp rates will have to go up. 
I think we're just competing against, um, you know, I, I lost a, I lost two staff that I've been training for a couple of years to Water Country who was paying, uh, you know, they were recruiting 15 year olds and they generally don't do that. So they were, they're cre recruiting younger and paying them more. And normally we wouldn't lose in town um, uh, youth to outer places because parents go, oh, they, they went to camp there. So the camp program is a, is a training program and, and we used to have a lot more. So it's really about payroll and increasing the hourly rate. Um, and it's also the market. I mean, this yeah. is for mm -hmm. every every business out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the number of, the lack of um, resumes that we received a couple of the postings recently yeah. was kind of shocking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just been, Just nobody's doing it. Yeah. They want everything benefits the whole package yeah. or they're not getting them. <laughs> what is your hourly rate for the camp? Um, for high school, it's around 10, 9 to 10, which is, you know, <laughs> they're living at home. They don't have a whole lot of expenses. Right. And it's nine to f and it's Monday through Friday. Yeah, Monday through Friday. Monday and then the high school yeah. is, I mean, college kids are making anywhere between uh, 11 and 12. So I do have to go up. But that is pretty average for rec departments. But I did hear a couple of rec, I just went to the state conference yesterday, and that was a discussion. And um, even uh, there's a lot of departments that are definitely hiking their hourly rate, which unfortunately then increases the rate of the program. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Any proposed changes to the? Actually, I just want to make a comment yeah. that when we're going to get there with the HR finance one, but one of the things we're going to be doing this year is conducting a salary survey mm -hmm. to see where our salaries are in comparison and what any adjustments we're going to have. We know we're behind, and we just did this a few years ago. Um, but we need to, and, they, and this is townwide. So, so the salary survey would be? Would be the way to determine where we are in the market. But for the entire, for, for, for everybody. everybody. every department? Yep. Black it might be interesting to, to also in your survey look at um, pricing because, for instance, I have a granddaughter who's mm -hmm. in the Coast, which mm -hmm. is like a little dance group, and, <clears throat> and it's always sold out. Mm -hmm. There's always a waiting list. You, know, you have to jump. You have to like study the website. You have to approach. You have to immediately register. Right? So that would suggest to me, I think that's like $60. That would suggest to me that, you know, $70 would, would yeah. be the way to so that is something we're looking at. Um, when we realized the staffing was harder to get in, um, to get these positions, the rates were already published. So it's kind of an afterthought sometimes, like, oh, wow, this position is hard to fill. And we're, we're already publishing these things ahead of time. So we will be looking at pricing. I have a kind of a new staff coming in, so that's one of the first things is looking at pricing overall for the programming. And we're looking at fees town I mean, again, we just – bumped up the cost of garbage bags, which hadn't been done for years. Yeah. Um, I don't see a lot of people coming out of the woodwork talking about it um, because it's still ch cheaper or in line with other communities. Yeah. And it's not, and again, and it wasn't a huge jump. it's not a huge jump. And we're not, yeah. and, and we're not covering our cost of solid waste mm -hmm. through our bags, which some communities do do. So. And this is, the, for example, this first year we're really charging for the Halloween hunt where for years and years it's been free. Um, but And before we've asked for donations at the door, but this year we're saying it's a registration fee. Just because normally I was able to get all volunteers, this time I had to pay, I'm paying at least 11 staff just to be there and help. And that shoots the price of the, the event hugely. Well. Sort of vision for the the Beach Street place, and uh, just you know, continue to in, um, continue to encourage that kind of um, service to the market community for months out. Exactly. Thank you. Um, that is the plan to keep things affordable 
and still make a revenue profit so we can um, reduce capital reserve costs because I can offset it with, with revenue. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good Halloween hunt. And of yeah. course, I brought the bags. <laughs> candy, candy. All right, I was hoping that's what was in those Best in that box. Ever. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. You know it's a long day. Mm, it's very sweet. We have some time <laughs> before <laughs> the next one. We have about half an hour. Do you want? We can start knocking out some of the smaller departments so we don't yep. have to do it at the end. That'd be great. So let's start on page. 25-year budget, which is the town council. Um, there is no increase. It's twenty thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Thank you. Um, pretty flat. Thanks, Amy. If we don't want to add a couple of counselors. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're all set there. The um, next page is the town manager's budget. It's an increase of thirteen thousand eight hundred twenty-seven dollars. Of that, eight thousand is salaries. Uh, the rest dues and subscriptions, training, and communications, which is our telephone system. I had a question yep. about um, the training and staff development. I'm sorry if I jumped ahead, if anybody else did. Um, but I was wondering if there was a plan. I know we talked about some increased training yep. opportunities, and I was wondering if there was a plan. At Not all. yet. Um, yeah. A lot of the training places haven't reopened since the pandemic. Mm. They're still doing only remote, which... Not the same. Right. So I'm, I'm watching. Okay. Yep. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Next page, finance. It's an increase no. of $5,679, mainly salaries. Mm -hmm. uh, any other highlights, Bill? Um, let's see. Not really. I've been working on cost reduction as much as possible. <laughs> How's the, um, I see there's some salary increase there. How, um, do we have open positions? It's not a new position. Uh, no, we have open. In, in the part time, I pumped up with the part time uh, hours a little bit mm -hmm. more to be like 25, I think. In hopes that we would get more time from that person. Mm -hmm. in, reduce overtime, et cetera. Yeah, just so the council let you know that we actually have less headcount today than when I started here nine years ago. Wow. Finance is one of those areas. We actually, I think at one point, had all of all in part full-time, about five people in that department. Now we're at four, one part-timer. Oh. Um, so yeah, headcount is, we're three, sorry, three, that's right, <laughs> because we moved one to HR. But um, yeah, it's, our headcount is not high. Again, in, there was that, they had the organizational study that was done, gosh, five years ago now. God. Yep. And the council at the time thought we were going to get a response from the independent study saying that we have a lot of fat to trim. And the exact opposite happened. They said you run dangerously lean. Mm -hmm. That if somebody gets injured or somebody goes, something happens, you could lose a department. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to address as well. Yeah. So, next page. Oh, I have a question. Oops. Sorry, just in hearing that that's a department that's been kind of cut back in positions, how are people, how's it going? How are people <laughs> handling that? Um, I know when I've seen that happen, sometimes people end up feeling very stressed or, or handling the um, increased workload can be a lot. Oh, that's a good question. I should <laughs> rather not answer in public. Uh, <laughs> no, I, <Heard. laughs> honestly, the, I think in, in one respect, you benefit because um, two of the people were relatively new. That's the only condition they know. Um, so mm -hmm. the, one of the people who was now the HR manager, um, she came in and that's how it was. Um, and then Steve um, agreed to have a part-time person come in to help with the workload because it was just unsustainable. And so um, that person came on. And she doesn't know any different either. This is the way it's been. So uh, well, that's great to hear. So, my my concern just being that we just had a conversation about how hard it is to find employees, yeah. and so I would just hate for us to be creating an environment 
that makes people want to look for employment elsewhere. Correct. Well, that's just what I wanted to check in on. No, that's a, it's a really fair question. I'm also was new to that condition. In fact, I came later than the other two people I mentioned. And, you know, you when you come into a situation, you're trying to make it better regardless of what you, mm -hmm. you know, you're facing. And so over time, we're trying to reasonably make adjustments. So one of those changes was having an HR manager. And over time, mm -hmm. I'd like to see some, uh, you know, at least one additional increase in that particular area because, yes, there are times when we're absolutely crazy um, in terms of the workload, particularly when you're doing budgeting and or audits and so on and state reporting. And those are, you know, but we're, we're doing some other things too to, um, to decrease the workload overall. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But anyway. Well, hopefully more hours from the part-time person will help out. I'm hoping that too. Thanks. Heather do Sanders. You, do you feel you have enough people to allow for cross-training and separation of duties where your finance? Uh, I think it's more about the, the type of people that you have in the positions. Um, Steve and I have discussed the possibility of, of making a change in the part-time area. Okay. And um, in the future, so that the skill set is different, and then there there's a greater capacity for being able to do cross training. Okay. Say for payroll running or something else. So that's a that's a really good question, and we have been thinking about it. Good. But it's you know it's one of those things where we're trying to be very cautious about raising the financial profile. Right. You know, when we're supposed to be, you know, the ones who are, you know, the arbiters of spending. One of the big things that the pandemic taught us is the importance of cross training. Because, you know, there were times if you would have one person out, the whole department could be out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where, and I don't know if I've ever discussed it publicly with the council, that one of the contingencies for water and sewer, if somebody was infected, with the virus, they would still work mm -hmm. because you can't shut down water and sewer. Right. That's the only department you cannot, we need to have water and sewer running. Mm -hmm. So the contingent was they would come to work with the with ill, and they knew that. That's, I mean, I hit to, to, to get a little editorial right now, that was one of my biggest pet peeves with the whole first responders get extra money because they never put in the first responders who actually we're going to be the first responders. Mm -hmm. they, they put police and fire, which they deserve it, but they never put public works. And that was, you know, we've argued that. We said, look, those, your, your roads still need to be plowed, even if somebody has uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. And they never put the extra money in for them. So that was, I mean, we can look at ways to do it, but it wasn't as, <laughs> Again, I knew somebody who bought a car this week, and they have the first responders thing. And I, I sort of said it, too. I go, look, these people are first responders as well. And I uh, know it's just if you have a badge. If I might, I'd like to add, because I, in fairness to the people who are, who are there, um, they have done cross-training internally. Yeah. And not only that, since you brought up water and sewer, um, there's been cross-training from that area in, in ours because of just the personnel need. Um, you know, it makes sense if somebody's mm -hmm. sick, you know, you've got to be able to help them out. You can't right. just automatically go out and reach out and grab somebody who's going to know that, particularly when you have a complex system um, that you're operating with. But to your earlier question, I do think that it would be a good idea that we look for an additional, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing in the, in the budget, but probably one additional person who can do more of that cross training and be there mm -hmm. to help out when when needed and it happens more than you might think so mm -hmm. and it looks in the um in the the training and staff development budget looks like we've um cut by 49 cents and is that going to be is that going to become problematic if we need to um if we need to dedicate you know resources and folks to, to doing some of that active cross training or am i looking at the wrong thing which is possible uh, if you go to the, because we took some of that money and put it in HR. Okay. It's just the separation of the positions. Okay. Exactly. And that's the, the next page. If you wanna hammer that one out too. Um, 
It's an increase of 10%. This is one of the larger areas, $178,513. Mm -hmm. Most of that is due to the insurance increases and retirement costs. So they're fixed costs that we cannot uh, change. And $55,000 increase in health insurance, $63,894 increase in retirement costs. And there's that 13,000 for the additional training there as well mm -hmm. that we, we moved. Okay. And that includes the, um, uh, the compensation survey that we're gonna do. And, and included in that is the library. So they asked if they could be part of that compensation survey. So I got an estimate for which included them. Is the um, 630000 for the retirement, is that all the town employees or including police? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councilor Baxter. Um, I've worked in town for about five years. I know some companies like you know, Google or something, very large companies, they self-insure with some of these companies. Does, does the state offer us? We do. We're in a pool. Yeah. Okay. We're in uh, Primex, which is a... a, a a self-insurance pool, basically, with all municipalities and school districts in the state. The reasoning is, um, in the 80s, insurance companies didn't, and this is also why we pool for our liability insurance. Um, we have people who work that they run into burning buildings, and they get shot. And insurance companies don't look, at, <laughs> don't look okay. positively on that yeah. as a liability. So we, they dropped us. Ah. So we self-insure through a pool. Okay. Um, for example, we're, you know, we've been discussing our liability insurance amongst town managers in the state that we may get dinged next year depending on the outcome of the Peterborough uh, situation of their $2 million being sold. Ah, right. Because if the insurance covers it, then we all have to cover it. So there's still, the, they, we don't know where that falls yet, but you know, and every so often you do get one of those situations. I knew a few years back it was a Seabrook case that we all got dinged pretty hard because something happened in Seabrook. Um, problem is now, we, there's no competition. We only have one pool. We used to have two pools that you could compete against, but that was changed with the Secretary of State. Um, I had one question. Yeah. Um, the merit increase pool, it's not showing any year to date that for 2021, any expenditures, was that? Um, we just didn't transfer them through there. That was Correct. distributed. Okay. Yeah. I'm not seeing any other questions, so we can move on. Town clerk tax collector, it's a decrease of $4,000, even though there's more elections. Um, she has more part-timers than she and been able to run the department that way. Where are you? I'm sorry, the next page. Town clerk. Town clerk tax 29. Okay. Oh, there we go, thank you. So that's why the salary is up? Yeah, sal Part-time salary is up, full-time salary is down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, question about was it here where the election stuff was? Yep. Election officials. So, I mean, I know that that number fluctuates depending on the number of elections that we're expecting yep. expecting to have. So that's why that's, that's changed in, that's so much. That's increased. Yep. Okay. It's a state election next year. Okay. Okay. So we have a primary. We have a primary a town election. Yep. Um, yeah. The other, I mean, to editorialize, and I know <laughs> that the, the chair and I discussed this with the clerk the other day that in its I never quite brought it to the council's attention because we thought it was going to fail, but I know there's an uproar about that um, with, with the Help America Vote Act that was failed by the Senate that haven't been, been discussed. That was a good thing for us that it failed because of the level of staffing that we were going to have to have, full-time staff. All those election volunteers would have to have been full-time. Um, the Help I think Help America Vote Act. What was it? No. What's it called? Uh. Yeah, the one that was, the, so, yeah. was killed this week, they didn't let them HR actually, one, or, yeah. yeah, they HR didn't let them even have the debate. Um, we've been watching that on the state level because of the impact it would have had on our elections. I, we're not against the increase in voting, but the level of, of what a small state would have to do was just prohibitive. 
that we, you know, it was one of those things where we discussed it with our delegation, and they said, well, it's never actually going to get up to vote anyway, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but it came awfully close that we were going to have to hire more full-time election staff. So. And HMA sent out, and a lot of that stuff goes into my junk folder, so I don't, <laughs> I don't see that. Like, it just automatically happens, and so I was cleaning out my junk email box and happened on that, um, the notice from, from the Municipal Association about why they were opposing it, and I... I had never, of course, you know, I'm politically have have a particular <laughs> camp that I'm in, and so I have supported that, and never thought about the implications for a town like Newmarket. So I, yeah, that would have been to uh, have to staff a, a polling place for I think 10 days or 14 days before every election. I thought, oh my gosh, like we run on volunteers, you know, so. Mm -hmm. The next page is code enforcement. There's an increase of twenty thousand dollars. That's changing the part of the individual full time. We're currently going through our resumes for that. This is one of those ones where we have difficulty for them to It's just the market. So you know, we usually get code enforcement officers when there's a lull in the economy because it's usually contractors who don't want to, you know, they want something more stable, and right now is not the time. Mm. So, uh, and a lot of the ones in other municipalities are of retirement age, we're seeing the, the graying of the position. And in the meantime, we're contracting. We are contracting at this point. Yep. Is, is that a position that someone gets, like, a license for, or is there a state test or something? We, re we re request that they do. You know, they have the, the background. There is no state licensing for code enforcement. So you're generally just looking for people that are experienced with Usually, yeah, maybe have their plumbing license or electrician license, and then they can get the training for the other ones. Um, but, it, but now we're, and that's the thing, code enforcement is no longer just building inspection, going in, check to make sure all the things are done correctly. It's also looking at zoning issues. It's looking at health issues. It's, looking, it's turning into a much more robust position. This is to replace Mike, right? Yes. Yeah. So I, I thought that you were going to create this engineering position. That's a different one. And that's somehow going to be part of Mike's job? No? no. Oh, so Mike is going to be replaced. They're going to get a new Mike. We're going to get a new Mike. Okay. We looked at that at one point. It just didn't fit. Okay. So I, I'm not crazy. You did look at it. We did. But a yeah, long time okay. Ago, yeah. It just yeah. Didn't, didn't make sense. Yeah. Right. Providing aid when needed. So, okay, yeah, a little audio issue. Um, but yeah, no, it's. And I, I, I know people sometimes ask, "Is it mean they're not getting the service?" No, they're getting the service. It's just that we we use we leverage our um, nonprofits, but sometimes it's better because they can provide more services than we can. We have to do it. And, I, and we have to provide everything from rental assistance to burial assistance if somebody can't afford their funeral. So it's a vast. What's the actual RSA that um, governs that? I, I've seen it, but. I don't remember off the top of okay. my head. It's like, right. it's like 39. It, technically, the. The town acts as overseas of the poor. Yeah, yeah, and, okay. I yeah. read that, but I, I wasn't sure. I was trying to find it the other day, and I didn't yeah. find it. Okay. 
Okay. Next page is assessing. It's an increase of six thousand seven hundred thirty-three dollars, and that's for our software, our software subscription that we use. Still, so we have a con contracted assessor, which works very well. Um, also, they do the the pickups for the reval, which has actually saved us money over time as well. Yeah. Is that a one-time bump in the software? Is that a, an annual fee? Is that a every three-year fee? It's an annual. It's an ongoing. Yeah. All right. So it's gone up that much in one year? Yeah. Wow. It's, it, it's, be, we, it, yeah. it's because we um, changed from a, where we were hosting it on our own servers and managing it oh. to a, a hosted solution is what was decided. The next page is legal. We're still, the, the reason why the overage was due to lawsuits that we had that was not covered by the, um, we have our law firm on retainer. Again, this has been a great savings of money for us that we just pick up the phone and talk to our attorney, not worrying about the meter running. Uh, but we did have um, issues, the MS4 that we had to cover through lawsuits and that's why it's an overage there from last year. But we're still not expecting that again this year, so that's why we're at 90. How often do we review that contract? You know what? That's a good question. We have not like recently. It's been a yeah. while. So we can do that. I mean, but the problem, I know the last time we did it, that everybody else had the hourly rate in this one firm that we had does the retainer. But we can look. So now, since we're there, planning, page 34. Welcome the community development director here. Can we do the CIT first, Steve? Because sure. Two members in the um, here. Could, actually, do you mind doing planning first? It shouldn't be long. Not at all. I'm just going to step out real quick. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chair, members of the committee. Excuse I heard that we're twinning. Did you hurt oh, your foot? Yes, I have a cast on my foot. Oh, I broke my foot. I cracked the bone in two places. Yeah. Oh my goodness. These things happen as you age. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, when another I heard two it, weeks. the first thing I said is, oh my God, Tony had the same thing. Yeah, it was <laughs> probably two days after I saw Tony oh, with was her it? cast yeah. that she, or that this happened to me. So anyway, well, heal quickly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for inviting me this after, this morning. Um, we have a almost a level funded budget for you this year, and it comes out to less than 1%, 0.04% increase. Um, and the town manager has reviewed it and concurs with everything that we've asked for. One of the changes this year is in the part-time salary area. And as some of you may know, um, Sue Jordan has been working with us for probably seven or eight years in getting the minutes out for the planning board meetings, zoning board meetings. She does all the uh, notices and so forth. And she had a, a software program that she was using, which um, when she first started using it, worked out really well. And then over time, we're finding we're receiving more applications. We have more demands placed on us. Of course, we've been working with the finance department, IT, and setting up the new uh, system for computerized uh, building permits. And that's taken a lot of Sue's time. So um, we are asking for funding this year for a part-time um, recording secretary. And I wanted to say that when I first started working here, we had a part-time recording secretary who did zoning board and planning board minutes. Mm -hmm. And we were very fortunate to um, recruit, encourage Susan Frick, who does the minutes for the Conservation Commission. She does an excellent job. And she's offered to help us out with this. And she's not a stranger to our CIP committee. She did all the minutes for us this year and last year. So we'd like to have her do the zoning board and planning board minutes, and we're asking for um, an increase in that line item from uh, 20, let's see, what was it last year, $2,300 up to $4,300. And I actually sat down and worked with Sue Frick and coming up with the hours and so forth. And so she's now doing the Conservation Commission minutes, um, and she'll be doing zoning planning as well as CIP, and we're hoping that that will be approved. Of course, that was also one of the uh, recommendations that recently came out of the 
MRI report um, that you know we're all, we're short staffed in the planning office, and they had recommended some ways in which we might be able to re relieve some of the demand put on the the staff. So that was one of their recommendations that we go back to the system of having a reporting uh, secretary, and everything else is level funded. Um, last year we had put in a a large sum of money for the advertising budget, and it didn't turn out that we needed that. So um, we have we've actually have a reduction in that budget, as we do in the postal uh, area, and contracted services. And um, so I would like to just, you know, recommend or that, um, you know, we have a level funding for this year with the recommendations made. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions? And just, uh, oh, you, go ahead. I just had a question about the impact uh, fee study that we had discussed um, yes. with the impact committees, or subcommittee. It was and last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you have any plans on, er, on, on pursuing that study? Well. I wanted to, you know, we need to go back and talk to the planning board about that. Um, a year ago, we did send off a letter to the town council. Um, I think you all received a copy of it with the planning board's recommendation, which they actually voted at, at their meeting on December 8th, uh, 2000. And their recommendation was for the time being that we move forward with a study for uh, replacing water and wastewater impact fees with a system development charge which would uh, be more flexible. And it's my understanding that the town has hired Wright Pierce mm -hmm. engineers, and they're working on developing that fee. And just to let you know that at the end of the day, when that fee is presented to you folks, because then it becomes a town fee, um, that we'll also need to make some re uh, revisions, if you will, to our zoning ordinance to reflect that. And we've been sort of waiting until that happens so that we could dovetail those two efforts together and be consistent. But maybe that is a, a really good time, um, as uh, Councillor Piper has suggested, that you know we, we revisit the issue. Because I know ever since I've been here, um, we've talked about the possibility of doing away with impact fees. It's come up in, I want to say, 2008, 2011, and in the last two years. And I think it needs to be looked at in a comprehensive way. And the committee that um, Mr. Kuiper is referring to did come, uh, we asked a consultant for a proposal, and we have a cost proposal for 20 to $25,000. That's probably going to go up with inflation. Um, so, you know, that is a possibility going forward. And I personally am not averse to, you know, putting that back on the planning board agenda for discussion so that maybe we can move forward with that. Um, the, the total fee was about a 25, 20 to $25,000, and it could be something that could be part of the operating budget, this budget, or we could do it as a capital improvements program budget. But yeah, so we're, we, we, first we need the water right. portion of the study yeah. done. Once we, and it's sort of like the old surgery situation, once we open the patient, we'll do other things when we're in there. So let's get the water part first, and then we open up, and we'll fix the rest of the ordinance. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Any I other questions? See any other questions? Thank you. Okay. I'd like to invite um, Russ Simon and um, Roger Cady, who are both on the CIP committee. If you'd like to come up and join me, or can you sit back there. Russ, we can bring up a chair for you. And the capital reserve contributions on page 55. Good morning. So, bottom line, the CAP committee recommended $1.3 million. I proposed $519,000. This is traditionally the one where there's a big difference between the, the committee and mine. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning is this. When the CIP committee does their due diligence and they recommend what projects we should be doing for that year, 
which is what we need to know is what the capital things are. But my due diligence is what can we afford with the entire budget during that year. So that's why it's usually the big slash. Um, what we're doing is these are all contribution to capital reserve funds. These are not necessarily the projects, but this is appropriating and placing the money into the savings accounts so we can do the projects in it once we have enough in there. This year we received 49 proposals from the departments, including all the town, well not all the town departments, but um, the larger departments. And we also received a request from the school. And I thought our process went very well. Um, we, we were able to achieve it in a very short time frame and we met our deadline of September 15th. Um, and we had some very good discussion going back and forth with the committee members. And um, so, we're also, I'm, I would like to say that I thought that the department heads did an excellent job this year in presenting their projects. This is the 15th uh, CIP that I've been involved with, and each year it gets better. And I think we are getting better data and information and uh, more um, thoroughly thought out proposals. And this is good. Some of these projects keep coming back to us, but every year they get refined with new cost estimates. So. I would like to uh, acknowledge the department heads for doing such a great job this year, and I think our chairman probably can attest to that as well. Um, Russ, did you have any words that you'd like to share with the uh, town yeah. council, please? Uh, a couple of things. For those of you who may be new, and I know we have some people who participated in this year, um, the process used to be about a six or seven month process. It's now about three and a half weeks. I think Steve's put us in the town. <laughs> wow. um, and that's to meet certain dates for Warren articles, mm -hmm. though the school may have more time to do it at the same time. Um, the school joined us about two or three years ago, I guess. Um, it's been, yeah. Uh, as that. a result of their potential use of impact fees that you were talking about, uh, was the reason to do that. Um, I think the process, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee all the names if you'd like, uh, Eric Bonneman, Jake Ford, Roger Cady, Michael Branch, Gary Swanson, uh, Katanya Conley, Jonathan Kuyper, uh, myself, but especially Diane, uh, Susan Frick, and Sue Jordan have been absolutely spectacular. I mean, to be able to get these kind of books done and keep track of 49 projects and the department heads and the issues and go through that, and they've done just an absolute let me say initially for Susan Frick, she not only takes incredible minutes, but she participates. She keeps us on track and she understands what's going on in the meetings, and, and that's just a wonderful addition. Mm -hmm. um, the other general thing is I think we've done a, a great job in getting, I think, everything in town, school, and water and sewer department together in one place. Uh, so we give a pretty good picture of the issues that are facing. I know at Mooney Point, some of you may be aware, uh, we went under a, what, about a nine month project that mm -hmm. got finished in three weeks and then had to wait for parts. Uh, and then uh, you talk about impact fees. Uh, I, I think water and sewer has dug up pipes from 1898, so I wouldn't be too fast to say, gee, we're a fully functional town. We got a lot of old stuff we need mm -hmm. to replace. And, Certainly, CIP is not one of the places we have a lot of hidden money. As Steve said, it's been managed effectively over the years, but it, when you have a gap of about two-thirds of the requests uh, not being funded, then your capital account has now gotten down to the fact, especially with large equipment purchases by uh, fire and rescue and uh, public works, that we don't have sufficient funds to buy the equipment put away. Um, so the price you pay of not putting away money every year is not having the money available to replace that equipment without an impact on the operating budget. So the town has started to move to looking at leasing, which got reviewed last year, and the town, as per Steve in the discussions we had, can enter leases as long as it has a cancellation clause, et cetera. 
mm -hmm. suggest don't use uh, because <laughs> if you pull that trigger, it could get real ugly. Uh, and I hope everybody understands that. You're signing up for a five, six, eight year stream of payments, uh, which you have the right as a town uh, to say, I cancel the contract or return to work. Uh, that doesn't do much for the credit. Uh, the <coughs> other issue is by going into leases, just bring it up as something to be aware of as more and more time goes on and leasing may be more popular either because it's efficient uh, or because we don't have the capital set aside. Um, you could have some. Yeah, it, it, it just to add to this, and this, you know, I, for those who've been here many years, I also advocate for debt, which is never something you always hear, but debt is not a bad thing. We, the way we are set up currently is we do it the old New England way, that you put your money aside, then once you have the money, you go buy it. Versus most modern municipalities and most of the ones around us, they'll issue debt annually to do these capital projects, and then when the debt's retired, they issue more debt to do more capital projects. So you have a, a consistent debt issuance, which is actually better for your credit rating for the when you, if we were to ever go out on the um, bond banks on our own. We don't, we go to the municipal bond bank at this point in time. Our difficulty is every time we have to issue debt, we have to sell it to the public, um, which is still there. This is like the last remnant of the old select board form that we have is that we have some capital reserves. Um, but if you go to Portsmouth, Dover, Rochester, Somersworth, they'll issue two, th they'll vote on two things. First, they'll vote on the budget then they'll vote on the capital program, which includes the issuance of debt for their projects for the year. Um, so they can, you know, they, and that's why you, you hate to say it, you see more things being done consistently because they just always have an issuance of debt. Um, hopefully we'll be there soon. We've been moving towards that. Uh, again, as the chair said, uh, with the issuance of leases for, pro, for vehicles, um, and we've been issuing more debt for water and sewer projects, but that's, you know, that, that's the way you, you address it for a modern municipality. And that brings up a question, Steve. I don't think I've asked this one before, but if you enter a lease today and two years from now you have a sufficient amount of capital projects to issue debt, which Steve's absolutely right, um, other than what the debt ceiling of new market is, which I remember in the old school days it may have succeeded yeah. uh, with the whole debt of new market. Um, but can you roll an existing lease to a new debt feature that we may have two or three years in on Depends on lease agreements. Some lease agreements allow you to buy out early, some do not. So, okay. say, yeah. So it, we would be canceling but paying off. Right. right. I got you. Okay. Yeah, and, and I would totally agree. Um, I just bring it to your attention that as Steve's talking about that transition, uh, it may take three to five years, maybe six or seven, to get into that rhythm where whatever's being paid off, you're putting on new, and that debt is a fairly constant thing. Um, you could throw a bubble in there. I think CIP needs to, as we've talked to Steve, the finance director uh, as well, uh, look at our forms to see if we can now separate assets that we purchased versus assets on lease, uh, because the cash flow nature of the fact that the assets on lease will have a future impact on operating expenses but other than those kind of uh, yeah. issues to think about, I think, you know, especially in the last three years, um, we've really put together a package, whether you fund it or not, that gives you what the issues are uh, in the whole town. And we've addressed a lot of them. I think that's the other part of that, too. We've done a lot of those projects um, over the last five plus years um, that, you know, we're starting to look at the next one. I know the committee asked me about this building and what's, you know, what's our future here and, I, you know, the next step. 
which the chair of the council and I discussed with the superintendent, the chair of the school board, is we'll probably have to do a facility study soon with this coming year that will look at this building and some of our surplus buildings and what's the what's the future. And we didn't want to do that. You know, you don't want to go look at somebody else's property without them knowing. So we just, I brought that up to the superintendent this week. That pro so sooner than sooner than later, I'll be set issuing an RFP for a facility study, so we can figure out where where we're going to be in the next ten years with these buildings. When Steve uh, got Greg Morales, we pushed for that for a lot of years. Uh, it was great. I mean, in the first couple of years, we got our arms around the stuff we owe, what kind of issues we had for maintenance, etc. Um, and I recognize that position is still unfilled or part time. Or it's or it's filled. Oh, it is. Yeah, filled we do have a facilities director. I think that's critical in rolling in school with cooperation and being able to not only get a handle on the real estate, but not to let the good work that's been done so far of documenting it slip to a point where we no longer recognize it. Does anyone have any questions about the committee's recommendations in the, re in the report that you'd like to ask at this point? Clarifications on anything? I don't have any specific questions. <clears throat> I mean, I looked through all of the um, all of the items, and I think you know there's not one area of town that that doesn't have some needs. I mean, we we definitely have some long term and short term needs. I'm hopeful that maybe some of the funding. Um, I'm the forgetting the acronym. ARPA. Ar yes, I'm hoping that some of that funding might be able to fund some of these projects you know I know that we talked about yeah. the fire station that's been on the when I was the rep for the, to the CIP committee and long before that I think when I you know voted on the, the fire station as a resident yeah. um, that was one of the things that we talked about doing was completing that third floor um, so you know and hopefully. just yeah just let you know I mean ARPA right now is very fluid we just got another possible change in the rules again this week it just it's moving around so it's interesting because a lot of municipalities have already set what they're going to spend on and we have not because i i want to see what the final rules are going to be before we start agreeing to something and we just there was a potentially bill if i'm right a, the house is going to put a bill in to expand our abilities on certain projects right yeah okay. and reporting times have changed right. as well so let me make my last comment if Amy Giganti can train everybody on how to make money fall out of the sky, <laughs> uh, I, I, I applaud her and her And I'll, I'll, I'll give the endorsement also to Sean Gregg. Sean, yeah. yeah. It's not as pleasant as Amy's, but Sean gets a lot, a ton of money for Sean the number of projects he has. Sean has done his job forever and ever, yeah. and has done a great job. Amy, I mean, just watching this over the past five years, getting the splash pad. Jiggling money from 15 different places in Cedar Glide to be able to put it together. Uh, I admire Greg. So, uh, they're like the Wonder guys. Twins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tons of money. Thank I you. do have one question. Yep. Sorry. Um, it was just about the um, police dispatch equipment. Is that an example of leased equipment or is that money to purchase new equipment? That is mm -hmm. almost, it's new, mm -hmm. but it's also we put it aside in case of emergency. Okay. If it goes down and we need to buy something quickly, we usually hit that. Um, we've done it a couple times in the past few years. Um, everything from the heating, uh, cooling for the systems to some part will go down that we have to withdraw. And it, nine times out of ten is I approve it and have to come to the council and say, look, I've already approved it. Can we withdraw it from there? I just have a question. This is probably more for Steve. When I see that you've reduced everything as you do every year. Um, my concern was the knob and tube wiring in this building. Is, is that, that going to be addressed? That is part of the, uh, we need to address that ASAP. Okay, so that, yeah. that's yeah. what it was over in the proposal. Yes. Okay, good to know. Well, one of, one of the issues, and we've discussed this for years, is we haven't got to the point with the new school not being completed to say, is this building now a town building and we have enough facilities here make this into a both meeting in town primary and move the school elsewhere or not and you want to kind of get 
that some of those larger right. decisions made of how you use the facilities, maybe the facility study, um, that gives you the roadmap because you don't want to end up putting one foot out and then break the other foot when you try to move it. So um, we haven't come to that conclusion, but you hate to drop $600,000 in wiring and restructuring this and then find out a year or two later that you're going to change the other state. So uh, the, the building blocks for that yeah. one have to be put in place. And when I looked at, oh, sorry, go ahead. Manager Fournier, um, I did have a question sort of about the final numbers. I mean, notably the one item that you um, that you left on here was the library. And of course, I'm delighted. Can you um, share a little bit of, uh, I, kind of what you saw here? So the library is a unique character, which we'll be discussing shortly because they're next on the agenda. Um, so Newmarket is actually even unique compared to other municipalities as it relates to the library. Our library is what they refer to, and this is your quick history lesson before they come in, maybe for everybody. Our library is a mill library. It's not a traditional library that's set up by the town voters at some point in time. That's why the council appoints the library trustees versus having elections for the library trustees. There's a deed that when the mill ceased to exist or ceased to fund the library, they put in the deed that when we do that, all the authority turns over to the board of selectmen, who will then appoint the trustee of the library, move ahead 100 years, this is where we are. However, we provide the library with a lump sum to operate. We do not get into day-to-day -day operations. We provide them with other services, but we do not do the management of that. I did not change the library because as the manager, I didn't feel they have an independent board. I didn't change it for that reason. Do I, this is always question, do I have the authority to do so? But I just that's the only reason why I did not reduce that one. But in a few minutes, you can ask why is there a twenty thousand dollar increase in their trustee <laughs> this trust fund? And uh, well, go plus from, it, it, yeah. it's unusual because it has its own trust fund, right? Which the town is not necessarily privy to, uh, and their board makes a decision of how much of their outside town assets do they use to support any projects or things of that nature. That's fairly. And I was just going to say that looking at the CIP, um, the, the program that you published for us, one of the ways that I read it and just to look at like how, how I think that the CIP has prioritized items is just in that, you know, okay, so for this particular project, there's a hundred, it's $103,000. It's all in fiscal year 22, 23. It's not spread out over four or five years. So I look at that as, okay, that's, that's a priority for, um, the, for that department and, and for the CIP, the people who were um, sitting on that committee. So mm -hmm. just as a, as yep. a hint, that's like my flag. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. so much. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Yep. The next is the library, and they are on page 57 of the operating budget. They are requesting. An increase of $57,186, most of it in salaries, um, for bottom line of $390,246. Carrie, I don't think you've met the council yet. So if you want to introduce yourself, probably the best way to start. <laughs> thank, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carrie Cronin. I'm the new director of the Newmarket Public Library. Carrie Gadwa, my predecessor, retired in July, and I started in this role on August 2nd. So I'm still fairly new. And um, I've had the pleasure of meeting several of you already, and I, I look forward to meeting the rest of you over time. And um, I thank you for your support of the library with our recent media campaign to get library card holder uh, residents to sign up for library cards. We had a successful campaign with 46 new residents signing up, so appreciate um, your support for getting the word out about libraries. So um, I've prepared some notes that I'm going to speak from today. If anyone would like a copy, if that makes it easier to follow, I'd be glad to distribute them. I would love a copy. Okay. <laughs> Bill, would you like one too? Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank 
thank you so much for being here. So I was getting coffee real quick oh. <laughs> during the transition. So welcome. It's thank nice you. To, nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. Um, so our fiscal year 2023 budget request for the library is 390246 and it represents a 17% increase over the current fiscal year. Some of our goals for this budget include increasing evening hours, adding a new part-time technology librarian position, expanding our programming, and right now the staffing is so slim for safety and for service levels, we have a minimum of two people in the building at a time, and we'd like to have more flexibility to be able to bring more of our services off-site. Since I've started in August, we've um, done a number of outreach activities, and it's really bringing in more families and more participation at the library. So that's an ongoing goal that we hope to continue to build on. We also would like to expand our collections, including adding a dig digital resources. Um, this total for the budget request also includes a 4% salary increase for all staff, which is um, consistent with the practice for other town departments. I, I will say I, um, I'm, we're very grateful that the library will be included in the town's salary study and classification that's being proposed for next year's budget as well. Some of our positions are under market, and so it would be good to, to get some more current information to understand what our goals should be in future budgets. Um, I will also mention that we do not have a, a long-range plan in place for the library at this time, but the trustees and staff are very excited to begin that process in the current fiscal year. So as we begin convening focus groups and hear more from residents about what they'd like for library services, we are um, looking forward to seeing how that will influence specific changes for the service changes for the fiscal year 2023. So to begin with the first, I, I've put a summary of the increases um, by the, the budget object code. So the first that you'll notice is that 62% increase is the salary line. While that looks like a big jump, it actually just reflects the fact that we're bringing one position that is 36 hours a week to 40. So instead of just the library director's position being counted under salaries, it's uh, two full-time positions now. And overall, our staffing is approximately, um, if you count our evening cleaning service, just over four FTE. So we're really um, kind of a bare bones operation at this point. So the second, co um, Object code, the part-time salaries represents a 1% increase. That includes the, because the other position was moved to the full-time line, that includes the addition of a half-time technology librarian. And we believe that's necessary to help with training, both with staff and community members. We're getting requests for people who are interested in learning how to use our resources more effectively, and we'd like to be in a position to offer that. Um, that position will also help us with technology planning to improve our infrastructure and support for STEAM-related programs and um, emerging technologies. We have some non-traditional items that we are circulating. We have a laptop and a hotspot and a, a telescope, but we'd like to add to a library of things um, so that people can check out gadgets that they might want to consider purchasing for themselves. But the public library is a great resource to be able to introduce the community to new, new opportunities. Um, the other bu budget object codes 52, 200, 52, 300, 52, 500, FICA, Medicare, retirement. Those are in substantial increases, but those are fixed costs that the library has, is not able to control. The um, programming line is a 300% increase, and that actually is a line that was reduced by several thousand dollars. In part, I think, due to the pandemic, the library had been closed. We weren't in a position to offer in-person programs. Um, but now that people are resuming their traditional library activities, that's changing, and we want to be able to offer more. That's really at the heart of engaging the community and bringing pe people in from all ages to be able to um, really partake of all that we have to offer. So I think that's really critical to be able to increase that. And I think it's always good to read the library's mission. Um, it, our mission is to promote knowledge and understanding in the new market community by providing resources that inform, connect, and entertain in a warm and welcoming environment that is open to all. So programming and the increase that we're asking for for materials is really consistent with our core mission. Building maintenance is just a modest increase to account for some unanticipated expenses that are likely 
in the maintenance of an historic building. Um, equipment maintenance, leasing, again, as we bring in a technology librarian that might influence our acquisition of um, new equipment. And the training for staff development, because we are a direct um, frontline patron serving um, service, <coughs> it's really essential that library staff receive ongoing training to keep their skills current. So similar to the programming decrease that happened in prior years, mm -hmm. as many of you know in your fields, conference attendance has been virtual. Those, um, it was been, we're coming out of a very different period of time and now that in the next fiscal year, I anticipate there will be more in-person training opportunities. So we would like to be able to encourage the staff to take advantage of those and to grow in their roles. Um, so the books and materials is a 17% increase. I'm requesting an additional $7,000. As I mentioned before in prior years, that number went down. The cost of materials only goes up annually. So in order to continue to acquire the materials that residents are looking for, I think that's an important increase. And the last is just the uh, equipment purchase. I believe that's $1,000 additional. A again, we haven't updated the library equipment for some time, and I'm st still so new, I'm learning um, what those priorities should be, but I know that we have some equipment that's fairly slow, and we'd like to be sure that our equipment is um, meeting the needs of the community. So those are really the highlights of these budget, uh, the budget um, fiscal year 2023 request for the library, and I'm glad to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I don't know how in depth of a question it is, um, but one of the things that y you mentioned was that 300% increase in the programming. Yes. Um, I know that um, I know that the in the scheme of things, it's a pretty paltry number, four thousand dollars for programming. But I've been um, tremendously impressed by the um, by all of the additional things the library has started offering. And so I'm curious as to um, what are some of the things that you guys, that you um, you plan to continue doing in the future with this increase? Sure. Um, well, we'd like to start technology-related programming. We've just hired a very part-time library librarian assistant who um, is a genetics major who wants to be a professional genealogist. So you'll see we'll, we're going to begin to offer genealogy programming with our Ancestry.com database and um, be able to, I think that'll be well received. It, it has been in every community I've had the opportunity to serve and introduce it. Um, more children's programming for sure. We also have a grant application that we put in that we'll find out about um, December 1st that is through the State Library for ARPA funds that would enable us to add um, a mother goose on the loose early literacy program for our youngest children. It will also be in partnership with the Recreation Department and with Lamprey Health to be able to bring those services to those locations um, and also circulate literacy kits. So we want to offer more kind of pop-up library services too. Um, today we'll be at the, the Rec Department for the Haunted Halloween Haunt <laughs> and it will be a pop-up library where people will be able to check out books and register for cards at that location. So we're hoping to do more in the community to bring residents in and make them aware of all that we have to offer. But really we're looking to expand on all levels. The, the possibilities are endless. Author talks, um, different lectures. We'd like to work more with the historical society. I'm still meeting people and finding out what the opportunities are available, but we're very interested in partnering and figuring out what the community would like and customizing our services accordingly. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'd like to congratulate you on working with Park and Rec. I think that's a terrific idea. Thank you. I, yeah, I, I imagine there must be other places as well. But um, yeah, to, to expand that is, is, you know, having, there's always synergy with these organizations. Yeah. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, I know I've seen, I was at um, the Conservation Committee's event um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that collaboration was was really lovely also. And so I'd love to hear things about like collaborations and the pop-up library technology. I mean, the Library of Things, um, I think that 
the mm -hmm. people tend to think of a library as books, which it is, obviously, but there's so much more. So it's really, it's great to see um, new ideas. Oh, thank you. I have one other question. Um, one of the issues I know that came up in the CIP committee was the issue of um, accessibility. Yes. And so I was curious, um, in the wake of sort of all the planning and proposals, um, what's being planned to improve accessibility? The, the physical accessibility of the building, specifically? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have been um, talking with various contractors about installing a heated pad to go on the, the ramp to the building. Okay. I, my understanding is that freezes over in the winter and it, it makes it kind of impassable at times. So we are looking into getting it that area wired so that we'd be able to ensure that the surface doesn't freeze as easily. <laughs> and then we're also looking into um, getting an automatic door opener for the front door. And since I've just started, the trustees, with regard to our capital budget request, are look, wanting to st sort of step back and um, work with an architect to figure out if the um, installation of a door at the side of the building is the best option. We want to be sure that we've considered everything before we actually move forward on that. But we are trying to make the current primary entrance more accessible for the coming winter. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Any proposed changes to the library budget? Great, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. You. So since the Director of Environmental Services is here, we can jump into Water and Sewer, which is on page 60. starting with the water. Okay. So the water, um, as everybody knows, we're doing quite a few projects currently to improve our system and improve our water supply. Um, that's the biggest increase on this budget. It's the debt service. Um, the other major increases are to electricity and to chemicals, and that's because our new um, plant to remove arsenic and manganese will be coming online. Actually, it's going to be coming online in probably about three weeks, and um, that's a to show the full year impact of that facility. Um, other lines, everything else is pretty close to the same. So, can can I ask a question? Sure. So, the arsenic removal is, is that to get us to a new standard, or is it because we're adding new wells and it, we? It is to get us to a new standard, and it will be able to handle the uh, Macintosh well and the Tucker well at the same time. So it will be able to treat 600 gallons a minute of uh, drinking water and put it into the system. The old limit for um, arsenic was uh, 10 micrograms per liter, and now it is 5 micrograms per liter. All right. And we're actually going to be probably removing it down around to around 1 or less. And the same with manganese? Manganese, yes, we're yeah. going to be reducing it to low levels. Um, so just a quick question. The you said that the electricity increase is due to the new... Yes, okay. yes, that's yep. because that's a full year of electricity. <clears throat> yep. Any other questions? Um, and, and obviously the debt service. Yes, it's, it's not that I can do about that. Yes. No. Then I guess wastewater. So the wastewater is uh, actually sees a small decrease in the budget, and it's because we're retiring some debt service, uh, the Cray Creighton Street uh, pump station um, is being retired. Um, 
There are some increases. Some of the notable increases is the equipment maintenance and lease. That is the new um, thickener project that's coming in. Um, that's for to purchase the equipment. It's a seven-year lease. Um, contract services. Um, that deals with additional um, stuff that we're going to have to be testing for. Um, chemicals. It's because of chemicals, the increase of the cost of the chemicals that we've been seeing. Um, and um, what else do we have? And then sludge disposal is based on the contract that we just um, signed with uh, for waste management. And then the last piece is capital reserve. Um, yeah. I just have sort of a general question. Um, I have heard some towns are having trouble finding chemicals that they were significantly more expensive than previous years. And um, were there to be a drastic jump, you know, is that built into the budget, or how, how would you handle that? It, it's, it's really hard because we're seeing it's so much unknown right yeah. now. So I had to decide, you know, do we, you know, just inflate it or don't. We're going to just have to manage it and try and figure it out. And if we come up short, we're going to have to come back and say, hey, we're short, and this is why. And I believe the way the RSA is written, that's the way it works for water and sewer. So I, I just hate to, I just don't know. I get it, yeah. <laughs> totally you know, get. fuel oil, I just don't know. Yeah. And it's, this is probably the hardest, and it, it was really hard to do this because, well, what do you do? Yeah. Do you just make it really huge? But that at the end of the day, I am allowed to come back and get more funds if our budget goes over for unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, because we're not said it's not through the taxation, it's through the rates. Okay. So. Oh, right. That's <laughs> right. And none of this, none of this budget has any impact on the tax rate. Yeah. It's all water and sewer rates. So, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough situation. But I guess I'd rather come back. Councilor Blackstone. So I, I want to go back and ask a question on the water. Um, yep. The there was some access to one of the wells and you were going to buy a piece of property or you were going to repave their driveway there was something we about just received the court debate. settlement yeah. what, yes. last week yes yeah we got the court decision last week that we were fine we, we won so uh, eminent right is that eminent domain uh, do domain yeah okay so we're gonna we're gonna take over part of that property then no we're gonna we're just gonna have an easement over the property okay so, so we can drive there. the well correct yes. right Yes. Great. They we we recommended twenty thousand. They wanted four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So yes. we end up in court and we would prevail. Yes. So it's gonna be twenty? Yeah. Well well no, we have to go through the uh, beat the appeals board, which but they will look and determine what the what the value value of the property is. So it's an independent board that's gonna decide what the tech what the town has to pay. But we have 20,000 in our budget, right? No, no, no. This no. is a this is a whole different No. Yeah. Oh. 20,000 in the budget is to pay for the Macintosh well which we purchased in 2008. Right. Mm -hmm. It says land acquisition. Right. Yes. And that's for the oh. Macintosh for the well. Oh, which the we property. Purchased oh, okay. Back in yeah. 2008, <clears throat> we have actually 2028 is actually the last payment. Right. This piece that we're doing for the easement is all through the um, Rural development funding, so oh, okay. it'll be paid out of that funding. Um, so you will not see. That's a separate here. thing. Okay, it's I separate, thought that's what this was. That's I'm part sorry. of the rural development projects. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, let's see if anybody else has any questions. Just raise your hand. But I'm just curious, kind of where um, the other, how the other projects, since you're here. <laughs> yeah, um, the South Main Street and the Bay Road project are pretty much done. They're just doing their final cleanup of, you know, doing the grass mm -hmm. and doing some minor work. Um, South Main Street will be ground and repaved in the springtime, so you'll see pretty much a new top coat. Um, Bay Road will receive a new top coat um, in the spring as well. Um, the last piece that we're working on is the tie-in for... Um, Moody Point, and that is actually started yesterday, and that is a, uh, should take about two weeks, so then we'll be start feeding them water. Um, the remaining projects are um, 
the Tucker Well, uh, New Road, and the Bennett and Sewell improvements. Those are going to be going out to bid on December 22nd is the target with a five week um, bid period. So I'm looking to come in front of the council in February for approvals um, and then an award in March. However, because of price increases, we're probably not gonna be able to do all the projects just because of increases in the way things are going. We may have to drop one of the wells off, two of the wells, I'm not sure at this point. Um, the reason we've been able to go so far is because we went back to the drinking water fund and received more grant funds, which was big. And then I worked with Diane Hardy and we got uh, $500,000 CDBG for the new road project. So we were able to get more done. I'm just not sure how short we're gonna be. So, but the good thing as of next year after next season, it'll probably be the first time since I've been here that we will not be on a water ban. <laughs> Which is exciting. We've been on a water ban since 2000. Wow. So it's a big, it's a big step for us when we should have enough water to take us to a 20 years. So that's my other question. I mean, because one of the things that has been talked about um, in a few different venues, like planning board, and we've had a couple conversations uh, at the council, is is development and and where our water supply, like what kind of what kind of limitations do we have on future we, development? If we any. did a 20 year build out that looked at all the properties on what it would look like for the next 20 years, and it said if we develop the the uh, Tucker well, and we have all those wells, we should have plenty of water for the next 20 years okay. based on what we're doing. And wastewater as well. Okay. So it puts us in a very good position. Great, any other questions for Sean? Any proposed changes? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, being done, I would ask the fire chief to come forward. All right, this is page. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Got it. Thank you. It's a $35,671 increase, mainly due to part-time salaries, which is covering, um, and some councils may understand, we did have an issue with uh, response times a few years ago uh, on weekends, and what we did to offset that was we put people on, basically on call for the weekend, and they'd get a, a specific stipend, and that actually has cut our response time down significantly and um, it just reflects the actual costs. Other than that, I, you know, I reduced equipment purchase by 5,000, but so gave a 5,000 increase. And again, for those who don't know about our fire department, we are extremely lucky for a municipality our size to have a volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I was looking at a town half our size on, on the seacoast that has a, has a full-time fire department, which is 24 on, 24 off, for I think three people on a shift, and their budget's one, almost $2 million for a, a, a community half our size. Um, I commend the chief for continuing to have a good s supply of volunteers out there and encouraging them. Since the fire department's so um, clearly dependent on volunteers, what are the kinds of things that we do to, um, to continue to engage these folks and, and keep volunteers you know, interested and, and retain? And like, what kind of challenges do you see there and, and how, do we, how do we deal with that? The biggest challenge we have right now with the folks is it's, we're getting busier and busier. So when you have a family and a bunch of little ones and stuff, it's the mm -hmm. being woken up in the middle of the night. 
So that's that's the biggest challenge right now. But a lot of we have a we have a mentor program, and we do different things with the with the newer people. And with the UNH right next door, we do pick up some kids from time to time, but they're seasonal. Mm -hmm. So so that helps out on the ambulance side, which is the bulk of what we do now. So it's pretty pretty much ambulance. Um, there's not so many fires like back in the day, but we still need firefighters, obviously. But it's covering that ambulance. The ambulance is it's when you're on duty at night, you're not you're not gonna sleep. It's pretty pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sir. You have to pass a, an extensive background check, but you have to hit, become licensed in something, whether it's a fi as a firefighter, certified as a firefighter, or a licensed EMT. Um, and that takes about six months for any of that stuff to really happen. It takes about six months. It really takes about a year because then they have to get off probation, and they, there's a lot to learn, operational procedures and stuff like that. So it basically takes a year to get somebody that has nothing question and this will apply to the public work side too um, gasoline and and just the cost like there's a little bit of a bump from from last year but are we I mean I'm, obviously prices are yeah it's like a crystal ball really yeah. you try I mean, I guess to it's the do same your, question that we had yeah. asked Sean about chemicals but it's we're just there's no way to lock it in because of the market. And we anticipated an increase last year because of the lack of wells, drilling facilities being open with oil. That I don't think that's why we're not seeing a huge bump with the price of the gas because we already anticipated some of that. Okay. I mean, the forecast isn't good, but it, it always does this, you know. I mean, yeah. As I mentioned in my presentation the other day, we have a unsteady rate of inflation at this point. And the other good thing is we, we have our own pumps, so we're not, you know, we're not buying it at the Irving, so we get a much better <coughs> price, mm, right. even when it's expensive. Any other questions? Oh, I have a question on the part-time salaries. Um, you asked for uh, additional 40,000, um, the town manager has put it at 18. Um, is that any different showing up on another line item? Anywhere? Nope. I just reduced it. Okay. It's what he likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my question wow. is, what, what impact is that going to have on on your department? We we cover the calls. Like, I don't – it's one of those lines where I have to cover it, so then I'll have to – like, as you see, the, if you look at the expense, um, the actual expense and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to – Which is higher – my budget is higher than the actual. But – so I go by history. I still gave him five thousand more than okay. actual. Yeah, we will just we we look at it and then I don't spend all my equipment purchases stuff what okay. I can control and then it's just a move things around. Move things around. Okay. He doesn't make anything easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does that so that we don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll have the public works director come up. <laughs> that is on page uh, 42 to start. There's going to be a lot of these. Start. Public works administration is an increase of $156,925. The major increase is $94,997 in full-time salaries. This is for the additional of a town engineer position. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I will be sending out that um, job description, the draft one I've got so far. Again, a, a, just a draft, but it will give you an idea what's gonna it's gonna be. Um, some of the items that they'll do is currently, if we have any the average run of the mill review of plans or review of roads, we contract it out with an engineer. This will now be in house. They'll be doing, uh, assisting the public works director with planning, with budgets. Um, they will do capital projects as it relates to water, sewer, drainage, bridges, roads, facilities. Um, 
they'll be doing some designs for an inspector municipal contract for projects. Um, it's stormwater. Stormwater. Stormwater is huge. Mm -hmm. But this will it it takes over the larger the the bigger picture of the facilities director um, that we were looking for and puts it in this position. So they will also be overseeing the systems uh, for HVAC, um, bidding for those kind of items. Uh, instead of the day-to-day the -day buildings and grounds, which would still go to the assistant, uh, the building ground supervisor, uh, which is what they've been doing all along. It, 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 this is the divide between the, the need of the school versus the town. We needed this higher level position when it came to projects where the school needed more boots on the ground kind of items. So that's why we thought it would be more beneficial. We are reducing engineering costs, contract engineering costs throughout the budget to offset this, as well as this is offset by the removal of the facilities director. So we're transferred from that department to this one. Mm -hmm. You'll see that in buildings and ground later. And Steve, when the planning board stuff comes through, we get the bill yep. for that stuff. For that service for that, that will no longer be you know we'll have somebody in house reviewing the plan you know do the engineering review work that the planning board would have uh, it's it's time I mean we have a lot of engineering contracts out there and this will assist with knocking that down some okay. uh, the other one large one is salt it's we're seeing that Increase significantly. Ports and harbors. Yeah, everyone knows what's going on. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, when we get an outside engineering evaluation, the the contractor is bonded, right? So, if there's a mistake or something, if it was done incorrectly, we have re recourse, right? Is there any equivalent to that when you do it internally? I mean, the, the engineer will have to be licensed. Right. So Okay, so it's going to be a licensed engineer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. It's a PE position. Okay. So. And the, the outside people are still going to have their own engineer. Our engineer will be reviewing it right This now. is our advocate. No, we I understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. And when do we advertise for that position? Not until next fiscal year, so July 1, 2022. Okay. So just so for instance, um, you know, all the times that we're using right gears or whatever, these various projects, will this engineer be able to, like, would he have been able to do the dam? Probably not, No. Right? No, this is sort of, I'll go along with this as uh, legal counsel. Okay. We have our general legal counsel, which is that $90,000, yep. but then we need specialty legal counsel for things such as water and sewer, uh, labor issues, certain items like that that we have to get outside counsel. So we still will need We'll still need contract for certain right. items. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if we were gonna like build a, do another big water main project, we'd still have a firm doing that. But this but individual would be? This individual would be, be sitting on that yeah. with them, taking some of the, the burden off of the director of public works. Yeah, and director of, right, it will be helping them so they can focus on other items. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. It was like with the projects this summer, it was a very overwhelming summer. Yeah. It was very, very overwhelming. Would not have like it was for Sean, myself, or right. even Steve. It's just it's a lot. Yeah. To be yeah, I mean to be honest, I was thinking of that the other day. That there's been so many projects. I haven't seen Rick as much as, I mean, and, and maybe it's a good thing, but I just haven't seen we him text. as much. We text. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I haven't seen them in the office as much because we've been out in the field so much. I was gonna say I see him a lot because I drive down the road and yeah. I see him out doing something. <laughs> Um, Any other questions? So right now we're at road, next one. Well, next page is roadways and sidewalks. I, I jumped the gun and said salt. Yeah. That's in this one. Mm -hmm. It's a sixty thousand dollar increase. Forty of that is for salt. The other is for uh, sidewalk construction. Additional ten. That's my big question. <laughs> sidewalk construction. Yes. Where are we at with that? Where, what is our plan? It, is there a plan? Do you envision that we will? be constructing any new sidewalks in the yes, next fiscal we, year? We did the Bay Road project. We Because we were digging that up, mm -hmm. it was the right thing. That was the time to do that. But mm -hmm. we do have the plan. We have a plan for all those roads. I believe everybody got a copy yep. of that. Sent it to you this yeah, week. Yeah. 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 Um, but there wasn't a schedule the way kind of the roadway sort of had a schedule. Oh, so yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah. Sure It'll be a budgetary 
type yeah. thing. Like we know the the big one is everyone's asking about grant route, right? And yeah. that one's just as of right now is cost prohibitive. The it's cost. Be a, yeah, it's going to be a significant. I mean, but the estimate's about a quarter of a million. Yeah, it was it was quite a bit. So we're going to have to put money aside for that one to address. So what sidewalks do you think so we like, do for next year? So what we're we're hoping to do when we put the new road work out, we're hoping we're going to put it in as an alternate item to have a sidewalk when we do all that work up to the fire station. The sidewalk would go from 108 to the fire station because that's all getting dug up next summer for the water line replacement and the drainage improvements. And then ultimately try to connect downtown to yeah. New Road through this to get more walking. Um, in addition, which Sean didn't mention, and soon we're going to have to begin addressing it once we finish the South Main Street and Bay Road, we have to address the water line and sewer lines on the hill, uh, back better term, the hill streets going from Main Street up. So those are going to have to be addressed. And there are some, you know, what do we do for pedestrians on that? Because it's so narrow, we're going to have to try to address that as well. So hopefully knock some of those out. And the other good thing, though, with this is like when we do it with the projects and there's funds available, we get, we can get a little money from that and not have to come up with so much because there's some forgiveness in some of those, those. But he is going to be looking at Grant Road, that water main. Now that we were placed up to there, there's a short section between Durrell and basically 152 up to Briellia. So he is talking about upgrading that. So if that comes to tuition and does happen, that would be when we look at doing that sidewalk because it's going to get all dug up. But as far as a plan, the cost estimates and what we typically budget. So we try to try to fit them in with the projects as we do them. Makes sense. So new road is really new the, road will be next year. New we'll road's be next, next, big one. next year if we can make it work with the project and the budget. What about um, on on is that Bennett? Yeah. Yes. On, Bennett, on the hill, you know, like so where they're doing all that construction is that something? Is that in the in the like the the developers' plans at all to work on some of that sidewalk? The new subdivision, everything will have sidewalks in their area. In the, okay. And then we have the Durrell one. And unfortunately, what I was going to do to keep going up and away, we threw on the Bay Road because it was all dug up and it was the right time right, to right. do that. So we could potentially finish Bennett Way next year with if this makes it. That oh, no, I'm thinking know. of Durrell. I guess I think up. I'm getting my roads confused. You got Durrell and Hershey. We didn't Hershey. finish Bennett Way. Hershey, that's what Hershey. I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's new road, Tanner, across the street, will have a sidewalk out to Durrell with a crosswalk okay. across. And the, the new one that cuts through to, uh, that's a private road, but that, that's supposed to have a sidewalk too. But the, but the sidewalk on Hersey, will that be replaced at all? It, it'll need to be replaced. Yeah, it's in it's really bad kind of shape. Dug up, yeah. But not through the developers. Okay. They, that, they've they've met question. their they did they built it back in the day. But it, that needs to get curbed and redone. Right. But once they're done building everything, you know. Okay. Okay, the next is street lights, the reduction of twelve thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars. Um, interest bill. What's the you want to explain? Uh, it's the the loan that we had taken out has been paid off. The loan we took out for replacing streetlights. So there's no more interest in principal. So now that's all paid off. Yep. And we just re get the savings. We get the savings. That's it. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next is bridges for and signs for guardrails. Guardrails. Yeah. Five thousand dollars more. You need to start replacing more guardrails. Okay. Buildings and grounds reduction one hundred twenty six thousand four hundred ninety four dollars. We went over the big portion of that. It's the transfer from this part budget to Public Works for the engineer. Okay. Um, Bill, do you want to go over the other reductions that for heat? Yes. Sure. Um, so. It's such a weird situation because on the one hand, we're getting reports that 
um, we should be pumping up the costs, which we did do that. We, we went through again um, after we got some late news when the town manager was doing his reviews. Um, and so we increased some of the lines from what they had been, what had been originally recommended. And the reductions are, are the result of the energy improvements that have been done over the last few years. So, I mean, the, not to get into a editorializing over this, but it's trying to figure out where we're going in terms of both, um, well, just energy costs in general is, is a really hard thing to do at this point. Um, our, so we do energy purchasing through, um, which means heating oil, electricity, and gasoline, um, slash diesel, propane, whatever. We do all that through one company who goes to market for us. And then they'll provide us with a big list um, if, if a big list is, um, if they're capable of getting that, and then we go through and make a decision about what's the best for the town. Um, the, I had a phone call with those guys a week or so ago, um, and they were saying that the supply cost was going to go up um, potentially 30 to 35 percent. Right. So rather than have a heart attack, I went through each of the bills and tried to figure out, okay, so what does that really mean? Because there are two parts to that. You know, there's there's what's coming in over the line and then there's the charge that we get from Eversource. So most cases, we're not really looking at a, it's, it's not a 50-50 relationship, in other words. So, um, you know, for water and sewer, yes it is. Um, but when it comes to other buildings, you know, the lion's share is the, um, you know, what we're paying for uh, the Eversource side, potentially. So, um, you know, really we're talking about a potential of like a 15% increase in some cases or um, half that or less. So what, what I did with, with Rick was to try to go through and determine, you know, were we, in terms of percentage increase and decrease, were we on par with where we ought to be? At the same time, uh, and I apologize because I did not bring my all of my detailed notes with me for this, but we went through every energy line item and reviewed and then increased or decreased. Um, in this case, I think we only did increases um, to make sure that we were covering ourselves for that, for that year. I will say this. The other part of this discussion that I had, and then I'm, I've been glued to Bloomberg and, and listening to what's going on in the en energy markets, is this. It's a, it's a lot more complex scenario than you might think. In other words, it's not a, a closed-loop system where everything's in the United States and it's the only thing we're considering. So for exa a good example of that is, is gas. So gas right now is, is higher than it probably would be, and I don't mean just gas for your car, I'm talking about like um, liquid, you know, LNGs, that kind of thing, propane and so on. And the reason for that is we have a, a crunch going on in Europe, and we have tankers that are literally going from the United States over to supply that market because they can get such a better price at this point from those customers. And so we, as a result, are, are suffering, suffering in quotes, um, as a result of that. So I think this is one of those, I remember, I, I'm trying to remember if it was 2006 or 2007, where we had this crazy spike in the market for um, oil and gas in this country. And I called some friends who were analysts that, and working for a hedge fund at the time, and that's exactly what they do every day. And I asked, do you have any idea what's going on? And it was a head scratcher all around. What ended up being was speculation in the market. I think this is not that condition. This is what I was saying earlier about, you know, we, we have pressures on the market that are international in nature. Some of that's driven like by the Russians and doing what they're doing. I know I'm going on so too far, but I think, <laughs> well, I just want you to know that we put a lot of thought into this and the numbers, I'm 
and trying to get them to reflect that thought. So that's why we are where we are. And I, I didn't want to say, oh, 35 percent, let's just throw that into the budget and freak out because I don't think we're going to be there in a year from now. I think things will have settled down, but God only knows. So what you're describing is maybe could be defined as a passive approach. In other words, you're, you're trying to live within the marketplace, right? Correct. But a more active approach might be to use the technique of Stone Church. Right? As you know, in, in Stone Church, they came in, they installed the solar panels, they paid all the money, and they, and they give him a lower bill. And, you know, Cheryl confirmed that, and, you know, she's the real money person over there. Right. And um, so why don't we get a roof here? Why don't we have somebody come in, put solar panels on it, and cut this our electricity? This roof can't handle it. It's big, it can't handle the weight. They weigh already, that much? Yeah. It, it, the, this building is old we, enough that it can't hold it. So, We've looked. So just for historical <laughs> yeah. purposes, yeah. Um, was that five yeah. years ago now? We had uh, okay. What about the Rex, the park and rec? Can that roof hold so, it? Um, well, just for yeah. just let me finish this okay. thought. Just for historical purposes, about five years ago, we had all of the buildings evaluated. Oh, okay. So we had an energy consultant come in, and they looked at things like um, insulation and the and the and the solar um, ability for the buildings and um, LED lights and HVAC systems. And so, and we did all of that work, um, right? Yeah. We've done all of that work now. Um, I mean, I'm sure that there's still some things that we could do. Right. But, we, but the work that um, they suggested at the time, we did, and we did that through a lease system. Yeah, it's a, it called? a performance. Um, <laughs> performance <laughs> contracting. Performance yes. contracting. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. So. Um, so we pay the lease through the savings that. So we are already at a point where we're saving considerably on our energy consumption. Thank God that yeah. we did that work. Otherwise, it would be that much more expensive for us it, to. And we've work. been looking at every building again to see what we can do. Because, yes, solar technologies have changed to see what's the cost savings. I mean, we did work. the fire station. Right, fire station has the Fire station. Um, there was oh, look great. at the PD. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, but you got to make sure it's also a sunny area. That you can do, but yeah, this roof cannot, can't hold it. They look, they did, we did what we could, right? What they recommended, and yeah. Was, unfortunately, there was stuff they were like, it's not gonna work here. So. Well, then I guess I would just encourage us to look again, yeah, um, because you know, we, we own more buildings than just this one, yeah, absolutely. And you know, these, these issues he's describing, they're not going to get better, nope. Um, to, you know, to give India it a, a, and all the you know uh, all these evolving countries are just their energy use is just going to keep going up and up and up right as they and, progress. And I mean not to be a, a Donny Downer here, but you know Bill and I have been discussing what's the potential of the economy in the next few years, and the only thing to look at that we've had a similar situation is 1917 and 1918 when there was another pandemic and a, a war at the same time. You had a quick recession after that, and then you had the Roaring Twenties. Well, guess what? We're back in the Twenties. And what happened in 1929? Yeah. It all came That's our biggest concern. So we are looking. And I mean, it's not the same, because it's not all the same. The, the, the rules have changed, but our biggest concern is having a large, a, a large recession in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, economies are cyclical. And you know, I always say the other thing that presidents don't make economies; economies make presidents. It's a, so we've got to look at those kind of things for the next ten years. Any other questions or comments for uh, buildings and grounds? Any proposed changes? The next page is uh, cemeteries. It's a reduction of nine hundred and. $80, just to reflect actual costs. The next is um, vehicle maintenance, which is an increase of $44,600. Again, it's to reflect actual costs. 
bigger fleets, bigger costs, I mean, 14,000 increase in equipment maintenance. We're running into the same thing everybody else is when it comes to fixing the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No parts. Can't get parts, it's crazy. Well, I remember, was it last year that you talked about the price of steel? Mm. Was that last year or the year before? And we, I ordered a new spinner for one of the trucks in January because it broke and we had, we always have one on the shelf. It showed up yesterday. <laughs> That's how long it took. January. Like, if, if yeah. that truck was out of service, I, don't, I would have had to try to make one or something. It's, just, it's that kind of, it's crazy. And I can tell you, like, for example, and this is for all equipment, I serve on another board of directors, which oversees a golf course. And they've ordered a Toro lawnmower, a special one that golf course have to have. In 2020, it still has not come in. It's out, and it's just the parts weren't coming in. It's, it's a special one, and it's now on a ship. So. Somewhere. It's, this is something that's going to be hitting us for the next year. Yeah. Life, we think life's back to normal, but it's those kind of items that are not. It's crazy. Those two new dump trucks you guys approved, they're, they're all made. They don't have tra transmission modules. So the truck is done, and we can't drive it. Oh, my goodness. Because those modules, it's a special chip. Mm -hmm. He's hoping by January 1st. I'm like, you but that's the kind of it's just that crazy you can't even try to be like okay i should maybe get one of these for the shelf just in case you just wow it's going to be an interesting winter if, when stuff starts breaking down that's when you have your breakdowns and hopefully it's not a snowy winter because mm -hmm. getting parts you almost have to have a crystal ball it's just mm -hmm. it's like governance through butterfly effect yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. a very it's, strange it's, yeah. situation that we're in Councilor Ward. Long, idea how much longer these kind of storages will continue? Are we looking at maybe another year, a couple of years, or is no idea? To Until people start working again. Right. That's, it, nobody wants to work. Mm. Is there, in the meantime, is there anything we can do about it, um, like planning ahead when we're ordering, or is this really just something we There's have to There's some things we're doing, like we don't typically stock tires on the shelf. Now if you break a tire, it's, it's three, four weeks. Yeah. So we we are, we are trying to stuff like that, but when it comes to like a transmission module, you you know you know you just can't. Hey, we're hearing the stories about everybody panicking about Christmas and all the pro all their products out on the ships. This is it. Yeah. We panic every day because we can't get the parts. We can't get the the items. That it's just impacting us. So the the, the yeah. little tractor for mowing the fields all around town, all the big fields. Down. Can't even tell me when they can get the parts. Have, so, we, have we seen impacts to our um, public works projects or services? Like, are, are we seeing sort of other delays or, you know, impacts on the um, on the community as a result of these, these kind of... Yeah, for instance, Bay Road, that granite curb, just because he knew we were doing it, he ordered it way ahead for me, like two months ago, and they were able to just do it yesterday. Okay. They started yet uh, Thursday. If we didn't put that order in then, the guy didn't even know if he had the job. He was like, you're talking about doing this, I'll, I'll stick it in my yard. And he bought the curb, and I hadn't even given him the job yet. And if he didn't do that, we would have never got that curb until like next summer. It's, so you have to really think ahead. We're mm -hmm. si he'll come in to me and say, look, we have a price of this right now. And I'll say, buy it, because we just have to. It's not a, we've got to get it when we can get it, and the price we can get it at. It's well, it's like a few, two, three, four, I don't know. I've lost track of time. But a few years ago, when we put extra money into paving mm -hmm. because prices were low. So it's that sort of planning ahead. Mm -hmm. um, you do it when you can, I guess. But it's, it's going to be a challenging winter with breakdowns and stuff because In stuff breaks. Weather forecast is for a La Nina, which means it'll be warmer. But more means snow. Yeah. We're yeah. always on that yeah. fine line. And heavier snow. Right. Part, part of this problem started years ago when companies switched from having inventory to doing just-in-time inventory. Right. Mm -hmm. So they used to have stuff on the shelf that they could ship to you, and then everybody decided, I don't want to have all my money tied up in this inventory. I'm going to wait until I need it to order it. 
and, it, and it, yeah. then you get the shipping delays and you get the transportation delays and you get a pandemic when you don't have the workers anymore and it just exacerbated what was already not going to be a pleasant situation so this has been years in the making mm -hmm, exactly. it just needed a pandemic to show everybody what a problem just in time is this is this is the same problem with going out and borrowing money because do you remember there, there were interest rates were like 17, 18 percent, and every grandmother was buying their grandchildren cars because they were also rich. So if you, you know, if if you look at you know borrowing money, you have to worry about that same thing, right? I mean, they went to JIT just because it was cheaper, you know, to save money, mm -hmm. right? Um, so everything has cycles, like you said. We also shipped all our jobs overseas, and that made a problem too, because yeah. now you're waiting for it to come on a boat from China instead of a factory in New York, so. Thanks, Rick. It sounds like we've been, for the most part, able to kind of, you know, tap dance and, and do what we need to do, but it sounds like there may be some real concerns moving forward about, about impacts on the public over the winter. Yeah, it could, you know, if a truck goes down, most likely it's not gonna get fixed right away. And, and, uh, in events like that, would we be able to maybe ask for one from another town or try to find someone? We, we do have some help. We do do that from time to time. It's just it, everybody's going to be in the same predicament. Right. That's the right. mm -hmm. I was talking, I think it was last week, that we were discussing the, the situation with trying to get. So the state does a lot of private contractors for the roads and they can't get them. They just, the, 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 what they pay. And it's not worth it, especially also if something breaks down. They don't want to damage their equipment and not have it for their their feast time in the spring. So they're they're having a difficult time. If you drive to Boston any time recently, there are signs everywhere requesting contractors. They're just not there. Okay. Next is solid. Um, yeah, let's go to solid waste. Which is a special revenue fund, as you know, that is on page uh, 59. Need to get into the more happiness. We're seeing a ninety-one thousand one hundred fifty dollar increase here. It's mainly there's no market for recycling. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of municipalities out there discussing stopping recycling. We have not, uh, and to be honest, we have to go out to bid again for our a solid waste contract so if if I can get a if I can get a good rate and stay where we are with this increase then I would probably accept another one year extension versus trying to predict for the next three years um, other impacts that we're having there's no place to put our garbage nobody wants to have their garbage nobody wants a incinerator in their backyard nobody wants a, a place to dump their garbage in their backyard mm -hmm. um, Bethlehem is closing. I believe so. Rochester is not expanding as much as it could. could. It, waste management wants it to. If there's no place to put it, we have to pay f to figure something out and ship it where they can. And that would be a significant increase. And so where are we, um, where are we shipping it now? Rochester. Rochester. And yeah. so, but that option's gonna go away? That's gonna, within the next 20 years, I assume it's gonna probably go away or be greatly reduced because nobody wants it. Okay. Uh, Rick, if we were um, self-sorting the recycling like we used to do back in the day, you know, in Stratton there'd be a bin for, you know, clear glass, paper, green glass, would there be any market for it then or is there just it, no market? Th there's a market. It's it's hit or miss. I just toured Lee it's to renew my license. They made out with their aluminum cans this time around, but it's just. Do they self sort? Because it seems like that's the part that's expensive is like they, getting someone they, to physically pick through those. Yeah, they, they they do do that, but I, I asked about their numbers and their budget and what they make, and I, I don't. It's not they a lot have of money. five people working there. Yeah. In in the facility, I don't know if you've seen that facility. Been over to Lee, it's huge, and all and then all the other equipment. And, and the I don't difficulty know how that makes any sense. Right, but, but the yeah. difficulty is. You'd be going from a system where an individual goes to their curb and drops off their recycling to every week those individuals have to go to a center yeah and to get once the public is taught one way they're not yeah. going to change them to change yeah and 
that's a very difficult. I mean, just with the composting, right. Right. people have complained that they have to drive to the to the transfer station and have asked if we could have you know multiple sites in town, which we can't. Right. <laughs> and the, we're a small town, so I mean, driving to the yeah. transfer station shouldn't be that much the of good, a burden. The good thing with us too is they're taking all the risk. We might not get anything, but they're not really getting a check back. Most of the time, they're paying to get rid of our recyclables. They're not. They're not making. But, but the way they do it up there, it just doesn't. The amount of money they are spending to to, to get back sixty two thousand dollars at the end of the year it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. about hazardous waste um, we do it every other year are we going to we, I think we're you gonna have to stop doing we're to the size now where we need to do one every year we so really will we do. start we, that is that because there's we, a there was a little bit of an increase does that reflect that or? it does there okay. was a there was a jump last time we did it and we wanted to try to there is money in there this current budget but we couldn't get on us everybody's nobody has help so we're going to try to set something up. For, we typically do them in the fall, mm -hmm. try to do something like in the spring. Because once again, you just it's hard to. Right. But we're, we've grown to the size where we, need, we can't do the every other year. We need to do it once a year. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, I just have one question. Somebody brought this up um, to me. Have you ever considered getting a scale for the dump to actually just weigh how much people are dropping off as opposed to, you know, the kind of eyeball? Yeah, the trouble is you have to get, they have to be weigh masters and certified unless you buy the little small one. And the trouble with the small one, it's a little small in this table and you have to put that in a bin. So if someone came in with roofing shingles, you gotta weigh. It, they'd have to pull, they, like that place is so busy now with one guy working so you could it would be too expensive to have a car and pull on and do that whole thing and do that yeah, okay so that's why we do the the rounded and level and yeah thank you and what's the status of the composting is it going well yep yep it is it's up to three bins is that right yeah three bins yeah on, on that topic um do you ever see a world in which it would make more sense to do curbside compost pickup instead of recycling? I mean, if they're throwing it away anyway, um, I don't know if Cassell's got a point where they're offering that or any of the you know ways uh, best whatever it is whoever yeah. you're using. I haven't, I haven't, you know, I, again, I went to the city managers conference and usually that's where they put out those new ideas. And I, I didn't see anything on that, like yeah. about a curbside. Because a couple of years ago they were talking about it, but I don't think because I mean it seems like if you could swap one for the other, yeah, you know, I don't know. I think with the public, it's sometimes a little bit tougher sell to kind of hold on to your food waste for extended yeah. periods of time. Good dry newspaper is not a problem for a lot of folks. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Any other changes? Okay. No? okay. That's it. Thanks. So right. we'll try to hammer out some of those small ones. We're back on page 35 for Conservation Commission. Does anyone need Oops. a quick break? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought maybe. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. And um, we mentioned it at the last meeting. You weren't there, but congratulations on the paramedic service. Yes. Yeah, nice so work. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome.
my Spanish, I didn't know how to now. say like a little Maybe bit lighter. So it's just no. like, <laughs> and then she well, she's already been like, she's Commission, page 35. Thank you. It's an increase of $1,285 for the part-time salaries. And I actually have, uh, they were asking if it would be possible to increase the dues and subscriptions from the original 400. I see you brought it down to 350. They were actually asking to bring it up to 700 um, to just cover changes with the um, organization they're part of. My thought is we never use any of the budget, so I think we can leave the level, the bottom line level, but we can, we'll pay the 750. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get, with that. I'm not worried about finding $350. Okay. So. The next is uh, economic development for $30,000. That's to continue the, what you will begin a presentation on November 3rd, on the next steps. The next is debt service, it's reduced by, the principal's been reduced by $10,000. Can I ask just a quick question about economic development? Sure. How much longer is that contract for? Um, that contract's for this year, but I wanted to keep something in there to do maybe the next phase. Um, coming year. So that's year to year? That year to year, yep. Okay. Andrew, Porter, could you um, give me a little bit of context? For the economic development piece. Well, that's um, we're using right now. They're doing studies on how to uh, redevelop the three gateways, which has been a goal of the town council for okay. two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been meeting with them and um, share uh, stakeholders in those areas on you know what what should we do when they're going to be giving the presentation to the council on November third. So we're, next was debt service. We're going to pay our debt. The next uh, to that is our interest on debt. The if any question on those two is not much. We, we have to do those. So. Um, IT is the next one, which is uh, down two thousand seven hundred eighty-eight dollars. This was the one that I discussed before that when we did the MRI study that they said you're too lean. That if there was an issue before we had one in-house IT person, we when he retired, it was the same time as the vacancy in the um, finance director position. That's when we created the dir director of finance and administration who oversees IT and finance. That's why there's some full-time salary in there. And the contract, and then we contracted out our IT department. So any services that we need, it's under the 51,000 and it's been working very, very well. Um, department heads are very happy with it, the way we've been operating there. Any security changes after the hack in in Pewper, or is that was there anything that you changed? I'm just curious. Yeah, good question. We we have, but it's it wasn't the result of that per se. We we had already changed all the switch technology, a brand new server, and we had changed the firewall device. Um, so and then we're we just I just authorized purchase of another firewall so that we can secure. Uh, further secure the uh, the water sewer area. So, because there have been so many um, attacks around the country, on well, around the world actually, um, on those type of systems. So we're just trying to plug up all the holes. 
but on that, that wasn't actually a technical problem as it was a, fish, a fishing expedition. Which right, that was, some, that was human error. That was a low tech. So, yeah. so we are actually addressing that through, um, or will be addressing it through uh, training. <coughs> and then as soon as something like that happens, we'll, we'll usually get on it and send out you know, a notice to people. This week we had a fishing attack where Tony was the <laughs> Tony was the victim. Tony oh, was the yeah. person. Was, and the person and was, yeah. and it was crazy too because they said, I'm in a meeting, could you help me? And they Coincidentally, actually, Tony was, was in my in office meeting, in a meeting. And they thought, oh, maybe this is really a request. So they were really intelligent, contacted me, asked me what I thought. <clears throat> I actually went to the step of contacting the CIS SOC, which is a national group. And uh, in New York, and had them review the email because I was hoping that there was a possibility they could catch him in the act, yeah. which is, you know, far fetched, but it was worth it. Yeah. It's IT. The next is um, Channel 13. The increase of $31,060, that is to bring on the Channel 13 directors a full time media manager versus just part-time. As everybody knows, it's becoming much more difficult to inform the public of what we're doing. Um, newspapers aren't covering us. Again, when I started in Newmarket, there was at least three reporters at every meeting. Now there's zero. So that's okay, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Not your fault. But I mean, yes, that's how, that's where we are now. To the point, if you read your local newspapers, Nine times out of ten, those articles are generated in-house on municipal items. So um, we're just trying to figure a way to inform the public more. Then it, the individual will be in charge of like our social media, sending out newsletters, informing the press of items that we have, sending out clips of press releases and those kind of things. So we're trying to, sadly, I am not one that we, should, we never should have government media. Um, but we need to get our information out to them. Is this all covered by the uh, by Comcast? By the um... a lot of it is. We do have enough we have cable franchise agreement. Yeah, yeah. What was our? We had a significant increase this year, didn't we? I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to answer okay. the question. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I apologize. But one of our concerns with the franchise agreements over the next few years is everyone cutting the cord. Yeah. So if every time you <clears throat> you subscribe to HBO Go. And don't subscribe to HBO, we lose some money. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, or HBO Max. Uh, so that's the that's our big concern on the cable side. However, you still need internet to do that. I would also I am monitoring the market right now. If you have not heard in other communities around us, there is starting to have competition for cable. Uh, Comcast has moved into Rochester, so they have Xfinity and Atlantic. Atlantic is, and on the flip side, is moving into Durham and Dover. So if they move to Dover and Durham, odds are we're next. Because we have portions of our cable system is actually, we cover Durham. That's why we have the bulk channels. Uh, most, most cable systems only have one, but we have bulk communities because we, ca we cover each other. So I would be not surprised if within a few years we have a second cable franchise agreement in town. Okay, I'm going to skip a bunch, and insurance, property liability insurance, this goes to the other discussion we had, um, that is on page, sorry, 50, 50, 50. 50. Yep. increase of $880 is doing pretty well, that's Primex. The next page is emergency management, increasing it for uh, no increase, it's just general supplies and training. We haven't had to use we, the training this past year, but I'd probably <coughs> do some more and encourage others to do that as well. Uh, we'll probably have a lot more of that in the future because what we were training for the last 10 years is different now than what we, after what we had impacted the last two years. So the next page is what we call grants. They're contributions to some community organizations that provide us with services, festival support. Um, that's going to be going towards just 
trying to come back with some sort of old home day or um, celebration there. New America Athletic Association, our youth uh, sports leagues, uh, Historical Society, Coast, um, and yeah, that's what our contributions are. If you go to the next page, it's our contributions to social service agencies, we call them grants. It's a slight increase of $600. We've level funded all the agencies at this point. We do review every year. We They have to apply, and the application, is when they return it, is pretty thick. We ask for financials. We ask for number of new market residents that are served, um, number of members of the board, how to, you know, are people compensated, and we review that annually and then provide them with a contribution. A quick question question for you so it's not like on July 1 we write them a check like not they, always no they have to request they it. have to request yeah. it because I'm seeing like a lot of blank spaces yep. and so I'm wondering if those were those amounts not requested they were not requested okay. but they, they were not requested for us to give them the money they do request that for us to appropriate the money right so the, we do get the request we don't just put it in there we do get the request annually if they if we don't then right. we pull it I mean, it, I think some councils know I have pulled it, and then it's caused, caused consternation with the associations later. But that they know the deadlines now. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, the big one I ever we ever had was that we still we give ten thousand dollars to Lampy Healthcare. I'm not in favor of that because we also give them eighty thousand dollars in no taxes. But yeah. it's in there as a political fight a few years ago. So, oh. after that, the next one is patriotic. That's for Memorial Day. Memorial Day parade and the costs. And which hopefully we will have. We will have that. Yes. They they really wanted to this past year. It just wasn't quite there yet. So that being said, again, the bottom line is fifteen million one hundred sixty-five thousand five hundred forty-one dollars. There was no changes that we got from the council. Any last minute slashing that anyone wants to do? <laughs> if huh? not, what we'll do is we'll have a resolution. I'm, I'll have to ask the council to suspend the rules to be as by law you have to present a budget to the budget committee by the 15th. So at the next meeting, we'll have a resolution adopting the operating budget of 15 million. And that will also serve as your recommendation on the warrant. Great. Great. That's it. All right. Okay. Then, um, yeah. I will, seeing no other comments, last call, then I will consider us adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>